Good morning, it's Friday, February 12th, and this is the Herald Review's podcast, The Daily Chirp. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories, events in the community, local history, sports, and more. Today, Wilcox Theatre and Arts Incorporated, which owns the Wilcox Historic Theatre, was recently awarded a $20,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Lawley from the Lawley Automotive Group, and we've stocked up on inventory at all of our dealerships. If you've been thinking about a new car, we've got the deal for you on a new Buick, GMC, Chevrolet, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Nissan, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You don't have to go to Tucson or Phoenix to buy a new vehicle. We're your hometown dealer since 1995. We'll beat the big city dealers in price, and our customer service is small town dealer friendly. Come into any one of the Lawley dealerships today, or shop lawleycars.com and see why nobody beats a Lawley deal. Nobody. Before we begin, some local history. Back in 2012, Kyla Staggs made history when she became the Douglas Fire Department's first female firefighter. Staggs, who was 22 years old at the time, was the second female to pass the entrance exam for the fire department, but the first to be hired by the DFD, which has been serving the city since 1902. Today's history is brought to you by Benson Hospital. Benson Hospital's comprehensive rehabilitation team strives to get you back on your feet and improve your lifestyle, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy. For more information, visit BensonHospital.org or call 520-586-2262. Now our feature story. Wilcox Theatre and Arts Incorporated, the organization that owns the Wilcox Historic Theatre, was recently awarded a $20,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. The grant is part of NEA's Grants for Arts projects. The Wilcox Theatre and Arts was chosen because it's among the arts organizations across the country that have demonstrated creativity, excellence, and resilience during this very challenging year. Eddie Browning, president of Wilcox Theatre and Arts Board of Directors, said that they are honored and thrilled to receive this approval for the award. Browning said the grant will be mainly used in the design phase to guide construction plans for the center. When the center is complete, the palace will house a heritage experience center. Among other things, the Center of Art and Heritage will seek to bring the experiences of ranchers and cowboys and cowgirls into the digital age. For example, an immersive experience project will use virtual reality to show real ranch work as it occurs on the ranch. It will put you on horseback as you're bringing in a herd or riding out on top of a mountain with just you and your dogs. It will even allow you to sit on the corral fence as the cowboys sort off the cows, brand the calves, and spray the cows for flies. The theater is partnering with the members of the Wilcox Cowboy Hall of Fame on this initiative. Thanks for listening. Before we continue, a quick message from our sponsors, Prestige Family Living. At Prestige Assisted Living at Sierra Vista, we aim to provide our residents ways to stay active and engaged through our Ageless Grace Fitness and Wellness programming. Join us every Friday at 1030 a.m. for free online Ageless Grace classes. Visit NotYourGrandma'sNursingHome.com to sign up today. Next, are you looking for a fun, family-friendly activity? We've got you covered. Brought to you by Apex Network Physical Therapy. Voted Best of Cochise County 2020, Apex Network provides exceptional care to the Sierra Vista and Benson communities. Choose Apex Network for all of your physical therapy needs. To learn more, go to ApexNetworkPT.com. The Douglas Recreation Division, with assistance from Douglas Industrial Development Authority, will be hosting a drive-in movie night tonight at the Old Kmart. The movie is Trolls World Tour, and will begin at 7 p.m., but gates will open at 545 and space is limited to the first 75 cars. In an effort to protect everyone, each vehicle will have a 20 by 20 square foot area. If you decide to sit outside your vehicle, please wear a face mask to ensure the safety of those around you. Next, this week we're hearing from members of our community on what they hope to see for the future of Cochise County, brought to you by our sponsors, Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You are probably spending a lot more quality time at home these days, keeping you and your family safe. And that can present some opportunities that you usually don't experience, like maybe laughing together at a funny movie, or screaming together at a scary movie, pitching in to make a special dinner, or maybe you're keeping in touch with friends and relatives and other places on your devices. And it just so happens that many of the activities we're sharing with each other are made possible by electricity. At Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, we know that you are depending on us both for fun and serious needs. And we want you to know that we're here for you day and night, sunshine or storm, easygoing times or trying times like now. 
making sure you're getting the power that you need every day to meet your needs. For over 85 years, through all kinds of tough times, we've been there for our members. And even though you may not see us, we're here for you now. Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, owned by those we serve. Today, we're hearing from Tom Titherly of Tombstone on what he thinks could improve Cochise County. A little bit better transportation, like taxis or something, like one or two, something like that. Because I've lived in small towns before and they have, you know, one or two taxis. And uh, for emergencies, I'd rather see a simpler way, you know, to get to the hospital or something like that. Not so expensive. So just really expensive to get out of Tombstone. Finally, today we're remembering the life of David C. Morales. He was a loving husband, father, grandfather, and friend to all. Dave was born in Jerome, Arizona. He grew up in the small mining town and attended Jerome Elementary and Middle School. Though Dave grew up poor, he was raised in a home filled with love, laughter, and support. His father was loving but firm. He always encouraged the children to do their best and to strive for greatness. His father's words were inspiring to Dave, and that inspiration never left him. When the mining operations in Jerome shut down in 1952, the family moved to Bisbee. Dave was a teenager by this time and attended Bisbee High School. His siblings described Dave as kind, respectful, a peacemaker with a compassionate nature and a great brother. Just before Dave started his senior year of high school, he had to put his education on hold. He became a father at the tender age of 17 and found employment as a bagger at the local El Rancho market. When he turned 18, he went to work for Phelps Dodge Corporation as a miner for better wages. During the second week into his job, Dave was involved in one of Bisbee's largest mining cave-ins that almost ended his life. He told the story just a few weeks prior to his death, saying his partner left to get water, leaving him alone in the dark cave. His only light source was from his miner's helmet, then he remembers hearing pebbles starting to fall and then timber beginning to crack. A heavy beam fell on his legs, trapping him. He laid there for eight hours in what felt like a tomb of certain death, until, against the boss's wishes, two miners dug their way to free him. This was a life-changing moment, and then he became closer to God, finding his spirituality and attending church more often. He obtained his GED and attended Cochise College to get his associate's degree. Then, the miners' strike in the 60s ended his career as a miner. His personal and family life also changed, which led him in a new direction. Dave moved to California to work for Smith Tool Company for a few years, but soon returned to Bisbee to raise his two young sons. He was hired as a police officer for the Bisbee Police Department in 1970, where he worked hard and rose to the rank of Sergeant of Detectives. He simultaneously became an instructor for the criminal justice program at Cochise College. During his years as a police officer, he met the woman that would change his life forever, Barbara Plummer Gregory. It didn't take long for them to fall in love, and it was a love that lasted for 48 years. Between them, they became the parents to five little boys. For Dave, it was a blessing, and from the beginning, felt all the boys were his sons and raised them as his own. Dave and Barbara soon realized raising five sons was expensive, and knew they had to seek other means of income. They had the opportunity to purchase the iconic Pizza House, which soon became a favorite hotspot for many of the families and teenagers of Bisbee. When you walked into the Pizza House, Dave welcomed you with a big smile and a warm hello. He could always be heard singing and whistling as he cooked. Dave was happy with life and even started writing a book, but he dreamed of bigger things. He made the hard decision to sell his business and go back to school. He started work as a surveillance officer with Cochise County Adult Probation during the day and drove to Tucson to attend Park College at night. And he didn't stop there. Dave went on to attend Chapman University, taking classes online and again driving back and forth to Tucson. He graduated with his master's degree in family counseling at the age of 60. Dave was full of energy and still had the ambition to continue striving for the stars. He decided to follow another one of his interests, law. He felt his experience and education was preparing him for an even bigger challenge, running for justice of the peace. Some people tried to discourage him because they didn't think he could beat the current judge at the time, who had been holding the seat for 14 years. However, with the encouragement of his friends and family, he ran. And he won. The Honorable David C. Morales served as Justice of the Peace for Precinct 1 in Bisbee for 16 years. He also served as Bisbee City Magistrate and Tombstone City Magistrate for a number of years. He retired from the bench in 2014. Retirement gave him more time to engage in his biggest interest, writing. His aspiration was to become an accomplished novelist, and so he began writing his second book. He also had a part-time job as a tour guide with the Copper Queen Mine Tour. 
Dave found it fun to share his stories with the tourists, but was awestricken that his life seemed to make a full circle. His memories took him back to minds of yesteryears, to a time when his dreams started and his life changed. But the job was put on hold when the COVID-19 pandemic started. Spending time at home, he and Barbara grew closer than ever before, as only two people in love can. Dave finished his book just days before his death. The words he wrote down now complete the story of his life, a life well lived. Thanks for tuning in to the Herald Review podcast today. Join us again next week. And remember, the Herald Review is here for you with local news you can trust. For more information on any of the stories you heard about today, visit us at myheraldreview.com. Right now, you can become a member starting at just $1.99 per week. Want to stay up to date on what's going on? Join Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. We asked, you answered. What is your motive for joining this forum? Neighbor Wayne said, I like the fact it's monitored and has real journalism input. The primary reason is that respectful communication is mandatory and we have it. It's hometown content. Join the conversation. Visit nabur.myheraldreview.com. Mm-hmm.